Hey guys, I'm here to give my review of SummerSlam 2012 for the SummerSlam Review Series. This is the 25th SummerSlam Review. I have two more of these to go. Which, so this series should hopefully be done on Thursday. Hopefully. So, this took place August the 20th, 2012 in the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. We have a six match card. So our maximum star rating is 30. We open up with Chris Jericho versus Dolph Ziggler and what is the best match on this show? The storyline here is that Chris Jericho has not won a match since his return in 2012 on pay-per-view. And the story goes into this that Dolph Ziggler is using is that Chris Jericho cannot win the big one. And this is a very good match. Lots of back and forth action. You know, uh, Ziggler works over Jericho's injured ribs that have been injured on the SmackDown before this. Uh, Jericho gets the win eventually with the with the Lion Tamer, not the walls of Jericho, the Lion Tamer, and forces Ziggler to tap out. Like I said, this is a three star match. It's a very very good match. It's the best match on this show. So three stars. So then we get Kane versus Daniel Bryan, which was the precursor to the whole Team Hell No thing. Uh, this match came about just basically because Daniel Bryan never beat Kane, so AJ put them in this match. Uh, it's an okay match. It's one and a half stars. It's nothing really special, though. Uh, Kane hits a choke slam, but goes for the tombstone, and then Bryan uh, puts him in a small package and wins the match. Uh... So Dan Bryan picked up his second win at SummerSlam here. So he began he went to two and one in SummerSlam. Uh so like I said, it's one and a half stars and then Kane froze the assaults Josh Matthews after the match. So then we get the WWE Intercontinental Championship match. The Miz versus Rey Mysterio. In what I'm pretty sure is Rey Mysterio's final SummerSlam. Again, could be wrong. Uh Okay match here. It's two stars. Nothing really special. You know, uh, Ray made Miz look good. Miz made, you know, this was an okay match. I thought Miz and uh, Mysterio had some good chemistry and could have, and this could have actually went longer in terms of feud wise. Uh, Miz eventually hits a skull crushing finale, gets the win. Two stars. So I'm not going too much in depth in a lot of these matches, but a lot doesn't happen in a lot of these matches. These matches, there's not a lot of happenings in them. Like the next match, World Heavyweight Championship match, Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio. Uh, two and a half stars. Uh, not a lot happens in this match. Which is a theme of this show because other than Triple H and Lesnar, not a than the main event. Not a lot happens of note on this in these matches. So they're just there. Uh, Sheamus gets the win after hitting the white noise and getting a three to Rio's foot on the rope, but Sheamus pushes it away. Uh, that's pretty much how the victory goes. Uh, and Sheamus retains the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, like I said, okay little match. Average two and a half stars. So then we get the WWE Tag Team Championship match. Kofi Kingston and R-Truth, or Boom Truth, if you will, versus the Primetime Players. Uh, one and a half stars. This isn't that good of a tag match. Uh, Boom Truth gets the win when R-Truth pins, I believe it is, Titus O'Neil, but not a lot happens. It It is a standard tag match with a standard tag formula, but... There's nothing really here. One and a half stars. So then we get a triple threat match for the WWE Championship. CM Punk versus John Cena versus Big Show. Two and a half stars. Uh, there are a couple good spots in this show, like in this match, where Punk has the Koji Clutch on and Cena's got the STF on, and Big Show taps out to that. But you... But one guy can't tap out to two finishing moves because who would win the match in a triple threat match? So AJ Lee restarts the match. Uh, Cena attitude adjusts Big Show. Punk throws Cena. Punk throws Cena out. Punk wins the match. 
Uh, okay, match. Like I said, two and a half stars. So then we get the match that this show is built around what should have been the main event, and it was. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar, number one. Uh, this was Lesnar's second match back in the WWE. So, to make up for, you know, Lesnar lose, losing at Extreme Rules of Cena, which he never should have done, uh, they did the right decision here and have Lesnar win. And the match isn't that bad, but Triple H and Lesnar... While this match is not anything like a no disqualification, no holds bar, or anything like that, like their other two matches were, it's basically Triple H said, let us do what we want to the referee earlier to cover that. Um, and this, Triple H does work over Lesnar's st stomach, which is some good psychology to the, the diverticulitis, which forced Lesnar out of UFC. Uh, and then Lesnar wins of a Kimura lock. And then you get the you tapped out chance and the question of is Triple H's career over? And for the most part, other and for the most part, other than I think Vengeance of 2011, he became pretty much a one-time a year wrestler, being WrestleMania after this. Uh, he also did Extreme Rules 2013, but that was the only other match in that time span. So he pretty much has been a pretty much semi-retired wrestler since this Are they coming back tonight? So, yeah, this got a two and a half star, so the total is 15 and a half out of 30. Gets it right at the C-. Uh, this will be in the Soundland Review Series playlist. Next up is Soundland 2013, which I'm going to watch tomorrow and hopefully have up tomorrow. So, if you like the video, like button is down there, subscribe button is down there, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye.